Hello and welcome to our reveal party for our painting contest for the Epic Encounters line from Steamforge Games. Uh, thank you for joining us. Sorry for, uh, we have a little delay in getting our announcements out to you, but we are finally able to gather all our judges together and get all our scores tabulated, all our golden envelopes printed up. And uh, I think we're ready to go here. Uh, I want to start off by welcoming our judges, our illustrious panel of judges, Russ, Caden, and Armando. Russ, why don't you, we start with you, uh, friend of the channel, Russ Charles. <laughs> uh, what is it that you do for Steamforge Games? Hi, uh, so if anyone didn't know, I'm uh, Russ. I'm the lead sculptor and uh, art director for Steamforge, which means that pretty much all of the miniatures in the Epic Encounters range, I've either had a hand in sculpting, sculpted myself, or been involved in guiding the team that has produced them. Um, and it is one of our favorite things to do. So I'm really excited by this competition. Thanks for having me on. And just, I want to extend our thanks to you and Steamforge too for providing our prizes for this contest. Our winners are going to get a double set of boxes, a minion box and a boss box. Uh, from Steamforge Games in the Epic Encounters line as their reward for such their hard work and uh, their talent. So uh, please extend my thanks to the team if you would, Russ. Y'all are good friends of ours, uh, so we really do appreciate Happy to do so. It's been a genuine pleasure to be involved. Thank you for having us. And while I got you, do you have any teases for any of the upcoming Epic Encounter products that you can talk about that you want to share with us? Um, Put you I'm on just the spot. thinking about the, yeah, um, I'm just thinking about the, the latest two sets that I've been working on. Um, I've just, I just last week signed off a load of artwork from uh, the amazing Dakota Curry, who uh, does a lot of our internal box and illustration and character illustrations. And uh, the work I've just signed off, I am confident in saying, is um, his. I think it's the best work he's ever done for us. It's phenomenal stuff, and that is a. That's a very exciting set, um, which, and this is such an obscure um, thing that no one's ever gonna work out what it is going forward, but <laughs> when you finally see the set and see the art, I think there's a there's a bit of a Lion King um, influence in some of what we've done with this set. It's kind of interesting, but I'm very excited for it. That's intriguing. I can't wait to see more. Do you know when we'll be hearing more about that? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't, I'm afraid. Soon, <laughs> I hope, but okay. as with everything, when, once it goes to factory and production, that's out of my way. I, I just I just get to play with the cool stuff when we're uh, getting all the, the, the sculpts and the uh, art assembled. Uh, I don't get involved with the other end of things. They don't trust me to do that side. <laughs> and I know from just working on some of the stuff behind the scenes that those timelines are so in flux these days anyway that you can take a guess yeah. now and we'll never know once we get through all the yeah i, I could tell you it was coming out in three months time or 18 months time and they'd probably be about as likely <laughs> yeah i hear you but yeah thank you for joining us russ uh let me go toss it over to kaden from lazy paint productions kaden thank you for joining us for this tell us a little about you and, and lazy paint so, oh, no. um, oh, there he is. Hi, I'm Caden. I paint minis and I kind of work for the Gallant Goblin as a mod on Discord. And I'm supposed to be writing some stuff, which I still haven't got around to doing, but there you go. <laughs> Lazy Paints is basically just me and Armando and a couple other guys just whenever we happen to be painting something, we're writing what we're doing, throwing it on a website, and hoping someone finds it interesting. Thanks for the Gallant Goblin for even making the website. None of this would even be possible without Grady having done the website and everything. We'd still just be a Discord server, but yeah, I think that's about it. Grady's a true hero around here for everything that happens on this channel. Like, I am just the hopefully somewhat pretty face that gets in front of the camera, but all the talent is behind the scenes with Grady. So he's the one uh, operating the ones and twos over there the ones and zeros i don't even know what numbers it is over on the control panel in the next room so yeah well thanks to grady and thank you Caden, for uh your hard work and we have some projects we're working on with you behind the scenes too which we can talk about pretty soon too so that's exciting for us too and armando you have been uh with uh us for a long time painting behind the scenes this is the first time i've gotten to talk to you in person uh and you were the winner of the last painting contest and so oh, yeah. welcome yeah. to uh, judging, tell us a little bit about you and how you got started in painting minis. <laughs> Alright, so I'm uh, Armando. I have been painting minis for around like three to four years now. 
I started around my second year of college. Um, yeah, so when it came to uh, starting paying miniatures, it pretty much just came out of nowhere. I just entered a my local game gaming store. I actually thought they were going to be selling the comic books because I tried to enter into a new hobby. And yeah, when I when I saw the the miniatures they had there, I was like, oh, wow, this is pretty cool. And there was, <laughs> I, I remember uh, I actually was interested in 40k at first until I saw the price tags on them. And it was like, yeah, really, just just really high. And I was like, you know what, I'll just check the, the Reaper miniatures because it'll um, more interesting, there's more variety, and mm -hmm. yeah, that's how I started. And right now, I'm actually painting to sell. I have three stores. Um, I'll I'll send you guys the links for them later on. Yeah. And yeah, but I, at the moment, just I'm actually um, well, I team up with Caden to do uh, with the Lazy Paint Productions. And I would actually like to thank him for actually pretty much pushing. Because uh, if I because if it wasn't for him, I would still be, well, you know, still doing, <laughs> not really doing much, just be there in the server. So thank you, Caden, and also thank you, Grady, for everything. Um, yeah, that's I'm awesome. Hoping, I love you guys. Hoping... What's that, Armando? I said, uh, hopefully I'm not lagging because it, it does seem like it's lagging on my end. No? No, I think we're all maybe lagging by a couple of seconds, but we're all good. There's no worries. All right. I'm in a whole all different right. country, so I'm sure I'm lagging somehow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> likewise. Grady will work his magic for the final edit. Yeah, we are definitely sh uh, a lot of different time zones represented here today. Uh, where are you guys located? Go ahead and, and tell us where you're at. Where you're at. Uh, I'm over in the UK. Um, I'm based in Worcester, where the source comes from. I can smell it on the air every morning. Um, and uh, so I'm... Uh, Steamforged is actually based out of Manchester, but I'm about two, two and a half hours south of, of Manchester, dead centre of the UK. Nice. Where are you, Armando? Uh, I'm in... I'm from uh, Long Beach, California. So it's always uh, sunny over here. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> One of my good buddies just moved back to Long Beach like two days ago. I took him to the airport and he really? flew out to Long Beach. Yep, I'll have to uh, introduce y'all one day. Caden, where are you at? I'm in Canada and Ontario. It's actually not a blizzard for the first time in about six months. So, <laughs> yay. There you go. I was about going swimming later here in Houston, Texas. So it's in the 80s over here. So we're toasty. But let's jump into our minis. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the winners of our theme contest. So every time we uh, have maybe five, six uh, theme categories. And these are for, we want people to feel like they can submit uh, entries to our contest, regardless of their experience level of painting minis. Uh, we certainly have like our top prizes, which are you know, mostly based on, on skill, but um, we want people to target maybe these theme categories if it's their first time entering a contest or they just have a, a, an idea or they want to kind of showcase even their, their photography skills. And so these are a little bit open-ended and uh, allow us to have a little bit more creativity and, and freedom when we're uh, choosing winners and everything. So we voted on these as well. Um, but we're going to start off with our Most Minion Award. Uh, and the categories have names, but no specific instructions. So it's however you want to interpret Most Minion in all the categories. Uh, so our winner, first of all, oh, by the way, I should say, uh, at the end of this video, we're going to showcase all the entries. So stay tuned to the end. We're going to have a slideshow and show you all the winners and the uh, artists. And you can also visit the website if you want to comment on ones and uh, give feedback or reach out maybe to even some of the artists if you're looking to maybe get some minis commissioned. You see a style that you like, and you can reach out to them and see if they're willing to, to work on some minis for you too. So uh, we'll have all those links down below. But uh, first of all, our winner for most minion was Odo. Oh one More Goblin Appears by Bobby Two Shades, who is a name I'm pretty familiar with here around the channel, too. Um, 
a really cool looking little goblin. Uh, anybody want to jump in and tell us about uh, what you think about this little goblin and, and the paint jobs? You guys are the painting experts. I'm the one who uh, just is a facilitator today. So uh, who wants to jump in and tell us a little about uh, what makes this little goblin special? Caden, do you want to comment on this from the painting side of things? Sure. So first off, this is some seriously good highlights considering how old this guy is. Like that is some smooth highlights right there. Normally when you got a mini this small, you tend they tend on looking seriously over exaggerated, the highlights just because of the size. But these ones, I'm impressed that you managed to get that many layers in there and keep them looking neat. The eyes are good. Hair is fine, but mostly the skin is what's really standing out here for me. Oh, the teeth for me, too. Those teeth just look so real to me. What do you think, Armando? Uh, okay, so I was going to say, I don't know why, but when I see the, the picture for this, the, the main thing that I um, pay attention to is the, is the tummy, the stomach. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, that, I don't know why that that gets my, my, my most attention. But also, I had to, I had to agree with Kanan that the eyes are actually pretty well done. I think for me, there's such a pretty good miniature and I really like it. It's not on my only complaint. And this is something that, um, uh, while reading the comments, the, the artist, Bobby, he actually mentioned was about the, the vines and, mm -hmm. um, that it was, uh, he tried to, uh, differ differentiate the vines from the, the color of the vines from the skin of the goblin. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think instead of him having to um instead of him you know going with like the typical green i feel like he should have maybe gone like a more um well he he actually he could have gone like maybe more brownish in my opinion like add mm -hmm. add brown like a brown base coat and then from there go to green or even gone with the entire different color like hmm. like i actually had an idea in my head like oh maybe he should have gone like red like the, yeah, I was going to say, leaning into like classic color theory, picking a red mm -hmm. to contrast the green would have been really dramatic. Um, the two things that really stood out on this miniature for me, I, I know how absolutely tiny this is, and in the photographs you can tell either Tony's hands are huge or that miniature is very small, and uh, <laughs> spoiler, the miniature is very small. Um, the two things mm -hmm. I really liked was the clever use of uh the, the dot and line highlighting on the hair to pick out the sort of coiled braid like um texture of the hair that's a really nice use of a painted on texture technique on a small area and i really liked the color choice to use a yellow ivory for the teeth quite often when people paint teeth they will dot highlight all up to pure white and it actually wouldn't work for the character of the goblin you know he's doesn't look like someone who has access to an orthodontist so i really appreciate the um the clever choice to use that sort of yellowy um sort of dirty ivory kind of feel it's like little decisions like that that make the miniature work russ how is it like looking at people taking the minis maybe that you've designed uh especially early on like maybe now it's just like second hat you're used to seeing all this but when you were first getting started and people were getting a I hold your minis and painting them in lots of different styles. Like, how did that feel to see all those people posting on Twitter and Instagram? Uh, your it's, figures. It's honestly, it's amazing. I've I've been asked this question quite a few times over the years in in various different ways. Um, um probably the most um, sort of old <coughs> kind of uh, context for that question was someone asking me how I felt seeing my minis painted by people who maybe weren't as far along in their painting journey as, as we're seeing here. And my response has always been the same, which is one, they're not my minis. Like <laughs> once they're out there, they're the min they belong to whoever wants to have them. No, no, they're not my minis anymore. Uh, and two, I will celebrate anybody who is, you know, finds enough of an emotional connection to a model that I've been involved with that it motivates them to pick up a paintbrush and apply paint to it. And I don't care where they are in their painting journey. The fact that they have chosen to invest their time and their energy and their effort into something I've been involved with, that is always something that's worth celebrating and it's always great to see. And when you see it done to this kind of standard, it's just 
that's just that little bit extra. Um, it, it's just a joyful thing. I love it. All right. Well, congratulations to Bobby uh, Most Minion on his uh, goblin here. Next up on our list is Most Aquatic. And the winner of this one is Alex Wayne with his Scuttler Crab. Uh, this is, I love these little, people taking the, the smallest minis they could find from the Epic Encounters lines and doing these um, this amazing work with it. Armando, why don't you get us started on this one? Tell us what you think about our little red scuttler crab here. So when I first when I first saw like the first uh, couple pick, like I know the first entries were all like the big bads of the well the bosses. And I was wondering, was like, when was somebody gonna like submit like a small one? And we finally got one, and one was the scuttler crab, which, yeah, I really like, especially the shell, like how he incorporated, um, oh, how they incorporated the purple and the green and the I think it was blue green into the shell, and then dry brush the shell with the gold, which is pretty creative in my opinion. Um, yeah, it, it was I really like the shell. And I do like the how they did like the little dots on the the forearms. Yeah, Caden, take it away. What do you think? Yeah, I gotta agree with Armando. The shell is really what stands out here. The um yeah, the like green blue in there almost looks like oxide. It's really nice, especially with the purple underneath. And the shell itself too is like really good again, highlights here. Um yeah, as Mar Armando said, the, adding the, the little dots and stuff in is definitely bringing it up from just looking kind of flat on the shell. And also the base looks nice as well. Like I'm just noticing this now as I'm looking yeah. at it here. But um, there's some pretty cool stuff here with the little rock or wood or whatever it's sitting on there. Yeah, if you just told me this was a real crab somewhere, uh, I think I would believe you. Russ, what did you think? Uh, well, uh, I... I have to say I love this piece. Big shout out to Holly who sculpted this. Uh, I think it's a, it's a lovely, adorable little model. Such a lot of character in such a small space. Um, I agree with the, the comments made uh, uh, by Armando and Caden about the colour choices. I get a kind of, it's like a micro Tamatoa from Moana vibe. You know, it's got that crab covered in shiny treasure sort of feel. And I yeah. really like the decision to paint the eyes that gloss black which is very realistic um you know you see that on a, a real crabs and yet and and despite being effectively a single color it, it somehow adds to the character again it's like we were saying earlier with the the teeth comment on on the goblin it's just it's a really intelligent choice um uh, that, that's that's considered i like the intentionality of that it's really nice lovely piece there's so many details on these minis that I don't even notice until someone has gone through and painted them up in this way. You know, all this little thoughtful details that are added into the figure that when it's unpainted, like I, I unless I'm looking very closely, I'll miss it. But now, now that they're painted up, you can see all those little, every uh, little bits of that shell and all the things embedded into it. And it really brings so much more life to it. So absolutely amazing work. Uh, that's by, make sure I have my thing up here, Alex Wayne, right? I uh, have so many different tabs open on here. Uh, yeah, Alex, so good job on the Scuttler Crab. Such a cool figure. I love that one. And uh, Holly for making it. Uh, next up, we have the most epic mini. And uh, definitely open to uh, interpretation on what this would mean. And I really thought the most epic was going to end up going to a figure that was one of the epic bosses, one of the huge ones. But our winner for this one was Reign of Ice by Barbarian bristle uh i absolutely love this one russ why don't you start us off with this one tell us about sure this so figure. i've got a i've got a confession to make which is relevant when we talk about this model which is that this um i i i partially outsourced my judging in that the entire epic encounters sfg sculpt team um we judged as a as a panel um, so, oh, so wow. we discussed all of this as a team um, for every entry that, that we uh, that we had to look at. Um, and for this, similar to one of our other entries later, this was a decision that was driven by both the painting choices, but also the presentation. I think the presentation of this model with the yeah. the, the way it's been photographed in the icy scenes and from the low angle 
is absolutely um, superb. Real, real good use of someone who understands miniature photography. But also, we absolutely loved the colour choices. Now, there's a photo here where some of the other models in this set are featured, and they've been painted in a different style, which was really interesting because it means that heavy dry brush to create that frosty kind of feel over the surface of the Frost King. That again, it's an intentional choice. It's a it's a really clever decision to reinforce the theme of this and the piercing blue eyes in that pale, pale flesh. Um, just is really really eye-catching and then when you present it in these scenes and with these camera angles it really does feel like an epic villain um we got heavy kind of um lich king vibes from from this one and we were just blown away by how someone could take such a small miniature and give it so much presence yeah this was one that was one of my very personal favorites uh, I just thought this was so unique and cool looking with that snow effect on it too. Armando, what did you think? Okay, so um, one, I am jealous of the of this person's photography skills. I have, um, yeah. it, it's just, <laughs> it's a lot better than mine. And I really like the, like the pictures where he had the, the final five, the last five pictures that the person included. Those were pretty good. I that actually influenced my decision to like of how I scored it because those were pretty great. And also, I gotta say, I actually do like how they made the the way they made like the because <laughs> it is like a lot of like in my opinion, it's like a lot of black going on, but. It isn't like it's all like oh it's like with the black cape and they, they put in browns to make it like a different compared to the armor because and also they added the the gray for like the dry brushing for the highlights which is pretty good and i gotta say this the fur good job good job on that i really liked it it, it reminds me a lot of how i uh paint fur so good job I really liked it. Awesome. Yeah, Loki, one of the hardest things about, I think, mini painting and submitting into contests is the photography. Like, it is mm -hmm. really difficult. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it should be, uh, but when you get down, you're trying to photograph something that small uh, with that much detail, and you're trying to especially do a background scene, like getting those to look good and to show off your hard work is really tough. Um, yeah. Caden, what'd you think of this one? Okay, first off, love the just the white dry brush for the frost effect. Um, you could have gone like really fancy on this. You could have like built up through all these ice blues on all the um, raised areas with lots of glazing and stuff. Or you could just hit it with a dry brush of white. I'm always going to do the dry brush of white. I'm a laser painter. I will always take the easy way. And it looks great. Like seriously, when this is on the table, you're not going to be able to tell that it's great even close up. I also really like how the flesh is like, um, it's all purple in the recesses and stuff. That is actually what would happen to um, flesh that's been exposed that long. I've seen stuff like this in dead animals. But um, yeah, that's very realistic. Someone really had a definite idea of how this would work. Like, this is quite realistic here. Um, yeah, as Armando said, the fur looks great. I like the subtle tones um, in the armor too. How it's not just black, there's some brown gray sets there, almost looks a bit rusty. And then we just have the pure black of the loincloth there. Yeah, overall, this is a really, like, this looks like something I'd paint, almost. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, this is definitely one of my favorites. So, yes, congratulations to Barbarian Bristle for the Reign of Ice Mini and the photos there. Uh, it is interesting for me for mini painting that uh, when you're painting something this small, like, the idea is probably that... And y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, you, most people are not going to be looking at your mini straight on, like picking up off the table and staring at it. You're going for the effect of what it looks like at a distance on the table, right? Like it may look kind of stylistic up close, but when you put it on the table, like it all kind of comes together and to look like something real and cinematic. Is that kind of how y'all view it? I, I would agree with that. I mean, I've done quite a lot of competition painting in the past and you do paint 
differently specifically for judged competitions and often competition pieces wouldn't actually look good in a gaming environment because the, mm. the nature of what you're doing is so different. So again, it, as, as you've sort of said, yeah, you can very much get the sense that this was painted with the purpose of being a piece you could play with. But I don't think that compromises the impact. I also, there's something wonderfully Jim Henson about, about it. It looks like some of the best kind of dark crystal kind of, you know, I could imagine it coming out of that kind of workshop. It's got that so much character. Absolutely. I love it. Let's move on to most cinematic, which for me, I had a little trouble differentiating between cinematic and epic. But I think when we're t whenever I talk about the epic encounter boxes, I feel like uh, Richard August and the team over there is really trying to help you elevate your combat encounters to feel like something out of a movie that feels very cinematic, have those very epic moments. And so we wanted to include a cinematically themed category for this painting contest. And the winner for this one is called the Queen of Death, uh, uh, Redha Ozgek. And this is by Tommy Music slash, and I'm, you know, forgive my pronunciation, Guns or Goons, Guns Mini Crafts. Uh, really cool version of the Lich Queen. Russ, why don't you head us off with this one? What did you think of this one? Sure. Our first, um, uh, so. Box, I think. Yeah, it is our first boss piece, um, and um, it's lovely to see it. This is uh, this is one of the bosses that I sculpted, so it's nice to nice to oh. see this one get a placement and get chosen. Um, this was a really interesting one. We discussed this. We had the same discussion about epic versus cinematic, and the reason that the team and I voted this one for most cinematic is, although the paint job is 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 very very strong. Um, really, it's those last four images where the piece is, is in situ in a, in a scene. And the, the effort that's gone into creating the lighting and atmospheric effects, it really does feel like we're looking at stills from some sort of fantasy movie, you know, where the characters are encountering this piece. You know, this is cinematic in the true sense of it feels like footage from from film um and i just thought i can appreciate what's ha what's being done here you know they're using some sort of tablet like an ipad uh, in fact i'm doing something just above my head here where are we there is uh, that gray blob is a display board that an ipad slots into to create like stained glass windows that light up so i'm familiar with this this idea um but the execution is really really strong you know just some really really well chosen lighting uh, a really good idea using the, the tablet to create that interactive element, the use of the smoke, and then again, as we were mentioning earlier, a real skilled understanding of using the camera to take the photographs. Um, and I realize I'm not looking at you because I'm still staring in awe at my other monitor at these pictures. <laughs> I think that no, yeah, just seeing too. someone with a real skill for creating narrative and story and atmosphere within uh, the split second of that shutter going off with just that uh, very small space with the miniature. It's just really, really well done. And that's one of the things that we, because hopefully, you know, for a lot of people, the painting of the minis is just uh, a paint. It's just painting. It's just uh, making these figures look the way you want them to. But for a lot of us who want to use these in our games to have the mini help provide the mood and the setting that we want to evoke at our tables is very important. So keeping those things in mind uh, is so vital. Caden, what did you think of this one? So, yeah, first off, um, the cell effect, really nice, and they're subtle, which is something you don't often see on OSL, object source lighting effects. They're always a bit overblown and don't quite look realistic. People tend to go overkill. But this one is nice and subtle, which is something I like. It also looks like it's been dry brushed, and I'm a sucker for dry brushing, so. <laughs> So yeah, the uh, Lich Queen herself um, looks really, um, especially the uh, whole, I don't know what it is, banner thing behind her. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, like I said, the thing that's really standing out is that OSL right there on the base. That's, yeah, nice and subtle, not too overblown. It's good. Very cool. Uh, 
And correct me if I'm wrong, like looking at the, the red and the green, which I think are the primary colors here. I mean, th those were specifically chosen probably because those colors work together, right? I, I don't know as much about color theory as you all, but Armando, I don't know if you have anything you want to add about that, but to me, those look really cool together. Yeah, because it, it's like red and green, they go well together, except in some cases you can pretty much depending on the color choice of the red and green it can go into christmas into a christmas look yeah. and that's usually what you want to avoid unless it's christmas time um pretty much what everything russ and caden said i had to agree um the osl is pretty well done it's not overblown which is so good because i really do not like it when they do like extreme osl it always in my opinion it looks terrible even by the, the best artists, it looks terrible. Um, do you want to tell us about a little bit about what OSL is? Uh, it's object object source lighting. They, they they pretty much have a, instead of usually using like the usual all the the sun. It's like usually most people use like all oh, the sun's like usually like the not the top but like that. Uh, I don't know how to describe it well, but usually usually when people paint, they have the sun. They, they they're like okay the sun is like probably like 45 degrees um so the miniature is here and the sun's here that's how yeah. usually i paint but osl it's like mm -hmm. oh there's like a fireplace next to the miniature so i'll have um so the the, the light from the fire will be a so is that's the light source yeah. or oh have the miniature has a power sword so the power sword will be uh, emitting light onto the miniature and so I personally prefer the more subtle way of doing OSL like this one like the Lich Queen here uh, a couple of times people do it a lot more extreme so like if this person would have done it more extreme um, the entire bottom would somehow be green mm -hmm. well here mm -hmm. it isn't yeah and it's really noticeable in the in the fourth picture um where we've got the model slightly from the side and you're just getting that lovely green bounce light hitting mm -hmm. the the columns and the center pillar you've got that that green bounce light and it's not that the column isn't green it's just that tint like armando yeah. saying it's a subtle shift of color that's quite believable mm -hmm. yeah and it's one of those things that you you don't even as a casual viewer, you may not even notice what you're seeing. It just feels like everything exists within the scene and it looks the way it's supposed to look and all those subtle effects that the artist did to make that seem possible uh, can kind of just blend into the whole. So I appreciate y'all pointing that out. Uh, yeah, I love this one. Very cool mini uh, by Tommy Music. So fantastic work there for most cinematic. Our final theme category award, and y'all, by the way, if y'all have anything else you want to say about a mini and I cut you off, just jump in and, and say, you know, hey, I want to say one more thing. Um, but our last theme category is most surprising. And this was another one that I thought had a lot of fun judging. Our winner for this one is the Tyrant Wasp Spider by Booty Casual Painting. And again, for, forgive me if I mispronounced that. Uh, Armando, why don't you hit us off with this one? Tell us about our Tyrant Wasp Spider. Okay, sorry. Um, I got confused by yeah, the Yeah, I'll let you load up. This is such a, by the uh, rankings. a interesting or such an interesting interpretation of the creature. Armando, I'll let you take it. Oh my god, I have no idea how this guy had so much patience with the with yellow. Like I <laughs> when I paint something yellow even if it's like a small area, I'm just like, oh, it's such a pain in the ass. But yeah, this is like, it's pretty well, is it like more than 50% is yellow. And it's just amazing. Yeah. I'm like, this guy has so much patience. The fact that he had markings that like he did a freehand on like the back yeah. carapace, that's mm -hmm. amazing. And also the front. The with the it's not exclamation points. They're the well, they look like exclamation points. That on on the black was just like, mm -hmm. yeah, this this guy has to get a prize. Like 
regard. Like <laughs> he has to get a prize. Like I can't, I cannot allow him to go home without one. Yeah, it gives this de- uh, mini a lot of, of depth too. This kind of like armor on the outside, this exoskeleton for it. Mm-hmm. Russ, have you ever seen the, the mini interpreted in a, quite like this before? Uh, not quite like this, no. And I think that it, it, it stood out instantly when we saw it for, for so many reasons. Armando sort of touched on it, um, saying, you know, the guy deserves a prize for, for painting yellow. Um, yellow is very famously a very, very difficult color to get right. Um, oh, hello. I have a dog. Hello, dog. Um, yellow is a very difficult colour to get right, and um, here it's been executed really well. And there are so many decisions here that I really, really love. The commitment to the theme, how long did it paint, take to paint every tiny baby spider with wasp stripes? You know, that's astonishingly uh, committed. The fact that we're still seeing some good colour theory choices, yellow and purple, are complementary uh, opposite colors on a color wheel so using purple as your accent for the face draws the eye to the face and creates additional impact on the face of the model using a gloss just for the eyes so you get that extra reflectivity and life in the beady eyes of the spider right down to adding extra skulls and the tattered leaves on the bases there are so many clever choices and decisions and, and commitment to the theme here and it is it was genuinely surprising when i opened it up it was just such a unique interpretation of the miniature uh, you know there's i i could there are so many good things you can say about this it's really really well done and i love the little uh, smaller versions of the spider that are on the base and the webbing on the base as well uh the webbing just looks amazing to me and i just love the little baby spiders along the along the base and along the uh lower part of the, the big spider. Yeah. Just, uh, so it didn't put a foot wrong, really. No, yeah, it's just, uh, the whole thing is amazing. Caden, what were your thoughts on this one? Yeah, so first off, I agree with everyone. This guy deserves, like, his own prize. The I free-handed yellow over black. That's like saying I climbed a cliff with a clothesline. Like, seriously, that's insane. <laughs> um <laughs> The, um, yeah, like the, the color choices are really good. It really makes the mini pop. Um, especially with, um, yeah, like Amanda said, the free hand on the back there. Um, definitely, uh, you want to honestly, there's nothing I can say that everyone hasn't already said here, but um, I like the, the subtle, um, no one's called this out yet, the sort of subtle purple tone under the rocks here on the base. Just notice that. Really nice touch. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Everyone's said everything else on this one. Oh yeah, even the little bits of rocks have uh, depth to them. Like there's a kind of frosting over the tops of the rocks, and it reveals some maybe like crystalline formations underneath uh, with the leaves. More it's one dry of those things again. Where dry brushing team. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of those things too that I don't notice all these tiny little details until it's painted up. Uh, just an amazing piece of work. I was so proud of everybody who submitted for this contest. I mean, there were no bad entries in this contest. Everybody did such an amazing job. Um, yeah, and all our theme winners here are going to be getting uh, one of our mini sets. Uh, we had the Gallant Goblin have produced, uh, I, well, we have three that we're putting on this particular project. They can choose between our young Cobalt Adventurer set, our veteran Cobalt Adventurer set, or our uh, really uh, huge-sized Harvest Dragon, which is one of the coolest dragon minis I, I think is out there. Uh, I absolutely love it. So uh, all our theme uh, winners will be getting these uh, minis, uh, uh, their choice of the, these sets. So congratulations. And again, that last one, most surprising by Booty Casual Painting, the Tyrant Wasp Spider. All right, now we're getting into the big prizes. These are the ones who are gonna be winning two Epic Encounter boxes from Steam Forge Games. And we had, uh, the, the scores were close on this one. I'll have to go and check while y'all are discussing these and how close some of these scores were, but uh, it was a hard decision. And I think we all, in our ways, we, we gave every, we judged on different, we had a rubric that we judged on, and we all had different, like, top uh, top choices. Uh, it's a very subjective thing, and so we all had different choices, the uh, four of us. But our third place winner, once we tabulated all the scores together, uh, third place winner was It's Getting Hot in Here by 2K miniatures 
uh, our giant worm mini. Caden, I made you go last last time. Why don't you kick us off this time and tell us your thoughts on this amazing uh, giant worm. The magma worm, they call it. So first off, this is just a straight up well-painted miniature. Everything about it is really well done. All the highlights look really good. The carapace or gel or whatever you want to call it on the back there is really nice. Even the base looks great. I really like how, um, I think the skin is supposed to be magma here or should be like something hot underneath it because we've got almost a glow, a sort of almost OSL effect on the edges here of where the um, fleshy underside meets the hardened upper side here. And um, very, it's very subtle. But um, when you zoom in and look at it, it's a really nice touch. If they'd just gone straight from uh, the red to the darker color, it would have looked really harsh, really unnatural. That's a really nice touch. We've got, um, even went to the bother of painting some yellow into the cracks here in the skin. More yellow over black, God. Um, once again, we have more interesting rock tones. Why is everyone in this thing just like, I just paint rocks gray, dry brush them, hit them with a wash, done. But everyone here, there's like these brown and green tones in the rocks it's like that is a lot of effort for a base right there i'd never put that much effort into it <laughs> so yeah i think that's about I think what's very cool about mini painting is that there are so many very simple and quick techniques that you can do. If you're painting a whole bunch of minis and you don't want to spend hours spending, uh, painting each one, there's so many cool, quote unquote, lazy techniques that you can use that are super quick, but that look still amazing on your table. Uh, and I think a lot of folks don't don't realize that before they get started, that you can do those things and still have really cool looking minis. So, Kate, maybe we need to get you to uh, teach a class on lazy uh, mini painting and how you can make a bunch of minis look cool for not a lot of work. So be thinking about that. Uh, Russ, I'll let you take the second stab at this one. Our mag Sure, I mean, I think, yeah, Caden's hit all of the all of the high points. Uh, I agree with everything um, said there. Um, just to further, uh, one, of the, one of the things pointed out, um, the fact that the back carapace armor has been done in that blue-black kind of cold iron color means that when it's edged with red, our minds just read that color palette like we've seen what metal heated in a forge or in a blacksmith's looks like. We can read that as heat. And that, again, it's a clever choice to emphasize the, the concept of the model. And then we can see reflected red here and there in the rock of the base. Um, I just really appreciate all of those decisions. I like seeing when people have made a thematic choice for what they want to do and you can see all of the decisions they're making to reinforce that and that's that's on display here so yeah really really nice interpretation and lovely to see something so very um uh what's the word i'm looking for um so very bold and confidently different as a way of interpreting the model so yeah great Oh, I love it too. Armando, what were your thoughts on this one? Well, uh, like this is like uh, this one was like one of like the first five or six entries, and yeah, this was like I was like, oh my God, like I will have never thought of painting this model like this. This is really unique. I really liked it. I I like how um like the skin. It doesn't. They they actually didn't like as I said uh, with the um, with the tyrant boss spider uh, with the yellow or I why well, I I forgot to mention this but I'm pretty glad I'm pretty happy that um, the yellow on the skin doesn't look uh, pastel like cause usually mm -hmm. when whenever I had to paint yellow uh, at times it does come, start coming out looking like pastel because it doesn't I can't blend it well this one he did he did it pretty well. The blending, mm -hmm. in my opinion, and also as mentioned with Caden, with the and also with Russ about the OSL, like the heat emerging from the body, um, yeah, it's pretty well done. I really liked it. Also yeah, it's one of those things too, where oh yeah, sorry to interrupt you. Um, no, it? Yeah, it's about how you can take the the paint job can make the figure. Like you can have 
the same sculpt and paint it in two different ways and it's almost an entirely different creature. Uh, we would have an entirely different stat block running it in our games and be in a different setting and just all from the same sculpt and whatever creative storytelling purpose you want to bring to it, you can bring to it with your paint job. So, yeah, absolutely. So, Armando, I might have cut you off there. Is there anything else you want no. to add? No, okay. yeah. I just, uh, I just uh, I, well, that's, that's it. Final oh, comment. Yeah. Thank you, though. <laughs> yeah, there was, um, no, it, we're on a slight delay with each other, and so it makes uh, sometimes the conversation yeah. a little tough. But, yeah, that's it's getting hot in here by 2K Miniatures, and I was looking at our final scores, and what separated third place from fourth place, we graded everything out of uh, 1 to 10, and they were separated by 0. 0.3 points between third and fourth place. Wow. Um, but between second and third place was 0. 0.03 points. Three hundredths of a point between these two. Uh, and our second place winner was the Lich Queen looking mean. Another interpretation of the Lich Queen. This one by an artist going by the name Lich Queen. Uh, mm -hmm. Armando, I'll let you take this one to lead off with. Tell us about this entirely different interpretation of our Lich Queen. Alright, so I actually, um, looking back at the rankings I have, my spreadsheet, I actually had this one mm -hmm. as fifth place. No. Mm. But... Yeah, they were all over the place, these for us, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'll be honest, uh, looking looking um, at it again, right, like, uh, I can see, I, I can see how it's a second place winner, because one, I actually do really like the way they did the cloth uh, from the purple to the red. That's mm -hmm. that's how I also yeah. paint uh, red at times. Pretty well done. The OSL, again, pretty well done. Mm -hmm. They didn't they didn't make it pretty overpowering. And oh, hold up, that was actually one I really like. And also the skulls. Yeah. The skulls. Oh are, yeah, look at that. They're they're pretty well done. Like they're good. I like how they painted it. Especially how it, um, you know, how it goes from like the bone to the fire. It reminds me of uh, the Ghost Rider. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And I love the basing as well with the grass. Caden, what did you think of this one? Um, yeah, I gotta agree with Armando that the the flame skulls look really nice here. Um. You could have gone too overkill or not enough with the OSL on them. And I think this is a really nice medium. Once again, we have subtle OSL here. I think we should just nominate everyone in this Gallon Goblin paid competition who did OSL. <laughs> like, <laughs> screw all Squidmar and everybody who are doing the crazy overblown OSL right now. This stuff looks way better, in my opinion. Um, the, uh, the, the uh, purple to red fade is, yeah, that's also really nice there. Nice bit of blending. It looks really smooth. Um, really nice and um how the fire on the base here is actually goes from red to yellow instead of yellow to red is in contrast to the flame skulls which is different oh, yeah. i like it um what else is there here i think that's about all i really have on this one uh, metallics are always really hard to photograph they always just end up looking just either really flat or way too shiny to make anything in them but um, from what I can see on these ones, they look pretty nice. Like considering there isn't much metallic, mm -hmm. the, the the stuff that we do get is like that looks pretty good there. I love yeah, the it, like, subtle like yeah, thank you, Caden. I love these subtle like gradations on her from the the green down through the yellow and the gold and her accessories and yeah the the sun uh, dial thing behind her and all the subtle uh, shadings and uh, lighting effects on that and the little metal things holding up the banners just all that looks just amazing without even looking at the the flaming base and the skulls which look amazing russ tell us bring us home with this one okay i mean i've got a few things to call out i just want to uh echo something caden just said about metallics i don't think it's a coincidence that the uh, the rise of how fashionable non-metallic metals as a painting technique 
it's gone hand in hand with the popularity of people photographing their miniatures because non-metallic metal photographs beautifully when true metallics are often very hard to photograph and I think that that's why non-metallics have become as popular as they have. Um, on, on this model there are three or four things that I think really really stand out. Um, not to continue to bang on about colour theory but that this is a person who understands colour really well, understands brush control, they've got that ability to blend and then they've made that choice. They know that purple and yellow are complementary colours, they know that red and green are complementary colours and so we have a yellow to green fade sitting in contrast with a purple to red fade. It's very very clever to decide to do that and then if you look at picture on our gallery, picture number three where it's the slightly overhead, I have to call out how good the decision to leave the cool grey back half of those two sort of 45 degree angled pillars with the warm orange glow on the front that that sharp contrast it's it's almost comic book but it works really really well on on in the context of this model i, I really really love how they that they, they, they picked that out and yeah, the use of the cool grey against the hotter colours is a really nice thing. This to me is a piece all about contrast, but not contrast in the sense of very extreme shading and very extreme highlighting. It's contrasting colour choices and cool colours and warm colours. And it's it's all, again, it's really clever choices. Um, and yeah, that's why it got my vote. I love that you all, I have you all here to explain why these look as amazing as they do. I can just be like, that looks cool. And I can't put the words to it about like the color theory behind it and the, the OSL interpretations. Uh, I, I appreciate you all being able to highlight those things for us. So people who are learning to paint too, like myself can take them as ideas like, oh, that's kind of how you do that. So thank you. And uh, that's absolutely amazing. Uh, let's talk about our first, and the, again, well, congratulations again to the Lich Queen for this amazing sculpt. It's just unbelievable. Um, but our first place winner by actually a, quite a wide margin, this was the one that was furthest uh, out from anybody. Uh, our first place winner is the Red Eared Hydra by Morgan, who also goes by Dyer uh, Vermini. And look at this. Let me load up on my screen. I'm going to let Russ take this one off to start with. Tell us about our oh, hydra thank you. here, Russ. I'm, I'm delighted, by the way, that this has won because it's not gaudy or flashy. And often when I've been involved in painting competitions, both as a judge and as a competitor, it tends to be things that grab your attention that tend to dominate the conversation and what's going on here is something much cleverer and more subtle than that and I'm really pleased that it's got the attention that it has. There are so many things in here that I really really like. Um, you know, the, again, the colour choice is excellent and I love that all of the decision making seems to be around using the palette of colors that this creature would have in its natural environment the patterning on the armor in particular that fade to a darker edge it's a not an obvious choice the obvious choice would be to have the darkest color in the recesses and get brighter and brighter to the edge to create a high contrast by bringing it back to that subtle coloring we get the sense that this armor is doubling as camouflage and ties the creature to its environment more um there is a lot of nice technical uh, paintwork on this model. I strongly feel like if an airbrush hasn't been used, then the painter is extremely good at very subtle blends because there's a lot of subtle tonal and colour variation on this model that, again, it's not flashy and eye-catching, but if you understand the technical process of painting, it's very impressive to see this sort of gradual control and gradual colour. And then the red cheeks are designed to draw the eye to the face. And again, we then have a green set of eyes to contrast those red cheeks. So understanding the fact that a well-composed painted miniature will draw the viewer's eye naturally to the face. Obviously, we have five of them here. 
which is quite a challenge <laughs> compositionally, but they managed to do it really, really nicely with the paint job. All of those elements, you know, we've got lighter colours at the top of the miniature, so you look upwards, and then as we move down towards the feet, the colours get more dark and drab to, again, draw the eye in the right direction. It's, it's just really well executed, really nice decision making about what colours to use, and then really cleanly um, applied techniques to deliver it. I, I just think it's a, just a really nice piece overall. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. And I also just want to mention very quickly because I don't know. There's so many other things to talk about with it, but the photography on this one is actually amazing yes. as well. Yeah, it's that the... macro close-up of the main head is remarkably yeah. good. Um, I can't. I I would love to know how they did that because I can't photograph models like that. <laughs> it just looks like a real creature at this point. Uh, Armando, I'll let you take second word on this one. Tell us about this Hydra. Yeah, right, so oh. <laughs> Uh, in my case, the Hydra, it's uh, one of my favorite sculpts from the uh, Epic Boss, from the Bosses uh, line. Epic Encounter, sorry. Epic Encounter Bosses. Was this and... yours, Ross? Russ? <laughs> this is another Holly, another Holly special. She's on a roll this uh... evening. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, I really, this, this is like one of my favorites. Also, I actually saw this before it was uh, submitted. I saw this on Twitter. Uh, I think... Um, Theo, I think you uh, retweeted it, and when I saw it, I was like, "That that person better submit this into the competition because this is just amazing. This is like a first place. I, I I'm, it's going to be really tough to top this in my opinion. And yeah, as as we can see right now, um, first place, and it's well deserved. Yeah, I personally really like I I like how. Um, like it was painted, like the brown on the, the necks on either side. It's pretty well done, especially like like the because I think it looks like they use a similar color palette with the the horns on the main head with the yeah. with the scales on the back of the smaller ones, and it works. Like God, I can't cannot even describe it. That's the thing. I. I just really enjoy this model. I, I can keep looking at it and be like, I, I did not notice that. Now I see it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, there's another detail I didn't notice. Mm -hmm. well, like, what the heck? Like, there's so much going on. Like, it's not, it's not really like so much going on, but it's just like so many subtle things that once you see it, you're just amazed by, by like, that it's been painted on like that. And it's just, I'm really happy this got first place. It is like one of my favorites. And it's, yeah, it's the details in the paint job by Morgan, but also in the sculpt, the things that, like I said, that you don't even notice in the sculpt until you see someone, a, a painter interpret it. Um, just incredible. Caden, I'm giving you the last word. What do you think? Yeah, so first of all, this is just an incredible paint job, like really, really good. I actually think there was an airbrush used on these front-facing belly scales here. But on the sides, um, that's definitely done by hand. It looks really good. Um, again, great, great color choices here. It looks really natural. It's not gaudy. This is what a uh, Hydra, if a Hydra existed in the real world, this is what it'd look like here. Um, yeah, honestly, everyone's just said everything at this point. It's just the, the way the scales go to darker is amazing. The um, mossy green brown texture on the back especially the way it fades into the tail there that looks great um yeah the the way the red the red cheeks there draw your eyes to the face immediately contrasted with the green eyes it's just yeah it deserves first place this is freaking amazing this thing here absolutely congratulations again to morgan on this uh, phenomenal work uh, and please stay tuned to the end of this video. We're going to showcase all the entries, all the artists, because everyone did an amazing job. You really should stay and watch uh, and see what an amazing uh, set of work we had collected for this painting contest. And I want to thank our judges too, uh, Russ Armando and Caden. Thank you for taking the time to, to review these with us today and to spend the time scoring everything and discussing winners. Uh, I really do appreciate it. But I would like y'all to leave us with, if you would, for maybe folks who are getting started or trying to improve their painting jobs, if you have a, a piece of advice or a resource that you want to point us to on maybe something that's not as 
you know, common out there, but something that you think that helped you in, in your painting careers, if there's something you want to leave us with. So, Russ, you want to start us off here? <laughs> sure, thanks. Even <laughs> my dog <laughs> ran away. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, what if you need I say? a moment, I have to go around the room where I can vibe for a minute. No, it's all good. It's all good. I think, I mean, we've talked, you and I have spoken about this before. We, we chatted at Gen Con uh, last year about it, and I still maintain that, you know, what people should recognize when they are attempting to either begin painting or get better at painting is um, it's always a journey. I've been painting now for dare I say it, I think it's probably 39, 39 years since I first picked up a paintbrush. Uh, and I'm two still... Years old. <laughs> since I was two years old, yes. Uh, and I'm still learning new techniques every single time I paint something. I'm just about to paint a lot of vampire models and I've got a whole new methodology for doing stuff on those that I'm looking forward to trying. So it's a journey that never ends. You're always learning something new. And I think that the best advice you can always keep in mind is to be open to that experience and give yourself permission to try things and make mistakes and don't be perfect and don't be flawless and don't try to be all of those things. Just enjoy the process. It's like, you know, they always say, don't they, that if, if, if you tell a group of pottery students, you tell half of them to make the perfect pot, and you tell half of them to make as many pots per day as they can in six months time the ones making as many as they can will be far further along practice and repetition and just enjoying the act of painting will get you a lot further than stressing about technique and method and worrying about about trying to create the, the most amazing art you can just enjoy what you're doing because every brush stroke you put on is there forever and you'll always have those miniatures as a record of that journey Thank you for that, Russ, and thank you for judging for us. You're welcome. Now, Caden, what about you? You got some uh, words of advice for us? Okay, so um, gotta agree with the. If you don't worry about making mistakes, just paint a mini, throw a wash over it, and it'll look fine. That's that's the best advice I can give you right there. <laughs> um, resources. Check out Lazy Paint Productions. We teach you how to do good-looking stuff, and it's easy. There we go, I self-plugged there, but, um... That's what you're here for. Yeah. <laughs> Armando, you're the next. <laughs> All right, thank you, Ken. Uh, we really oh. appreciate that from you. Armando, lead us out of here. So, yeah. Well, well, one, yeah, check out Lazy Paint Productions. We're, like, we'll have, um, we'll continue adding on more and more articles as time passes. And hopefully you'll be able to find stuff there that you'll enjoy and try to copy and eventually make your own thing. Yeah, just keep painting, painting, paint, painting. Um, try to join a competition or two. Like that's how I actually managed to improve. Um, I I start like it doesn't have to be like the big golden demon. Uh, personally, I don't really think golden demon is that good, but like join any competition like in whether it's small or big just join something uh try to improve uh you don't have to win just just enjoy the experience like um it isn't always about winning the thing is i would okay this isn't only my case but don't really pay that much attention to social media and that's, that's like like I, I, and this is what I noticed is like when I stopped, um, because I used to be on social media just checking out like a lot of people's paint jobs, and I'll pretty much like be hitting myself, like, like being like, oh, why aren't you as good as that? But once I stopped paying attention to that, stopped doing my, start doing my own thing, I saw that I actually tried, like, started improving a lot, and yeah, just, just. Keep painting, just keep practicing. You eventually improve. Like it doesn't matter if it takes like six months or a year, or maybe you're one of those people who can like improve within like a month. Just keep painting. Or thirty nine years. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> still got a way to go yet. I, I can I just jump on the end of something Armando said 
uh, reminded me of something that I, I think is a really good resource. It's not something specific, but as a general principle, social media can be uh, quite pressuring. You know, Instagram reality versus real life is just as true in miniature painting as it is in anything else. That said, if you can find yourself a good hobby community on a Discord that has a painting section, the Steamforge Games has a Discord and there is a painting and hobby chat section uh, in there that you know, we are in ourselves. Um, and it's not just Steamforge things. We, we talk about our own hobby things that are always to do with what we make. Um, a good supportive Discord community where you can get feedback, discuss ideas, just chat with like-minded people. That's really beneficial. The one great thing about modern communications now is it's so much easier to find your, your tribe and find your community. And I would support and encourage people to go and find positive, communities and places like discord are a good place to do that yeah and we have an active one as well over at the gallant goblin uh with armando and caden being active in there and helping us out and uh caden even helping us moderate it so uh yeah thanks again to, to all of you if you are interested in entering another painting contest i'm hoping to be able to announce our third painting contest here in the coming weeks uh so we're going to keep this ball rolling so please stay tuned for that and uh again thank all three of you for joining us congratulations to our winners and all our amazing entries stay tuned here at the end to see them all uh final words anything else you want to leave us with any final plug that you didn't get in before it's too late russ um, i would actually like to add on something to the advice oh sorry <laughs> no no Kaden, go but okay i'll go um youtube a lot of what basically made me go from being okay at miniature painting to being good at it, check out a lot of the YouTubers. Not some of the big ones, like the really big ones like Squidmore who are doing, or like Miniac who do insanely good paint jobs. Check out some of the smaller ones. They tend to be the guys who kind of will help you get off the ground the best. Basically, that is what helped me the most. And also, yeah, being in a community, being in the Gallant Goblin Discord is really what... um. That's the reason I started like painting, not just for gaming, but just to be a painter. I started Lazy Paint Productions right through there. Everyone in Lazy Paints is from the Gallant Goblin. Yeah, get into a good community. It'll change your whole hobby game. Thank you, Caden. Russ, what were you going to add for us? Uh, I, I, you, you said, if I, did we have any closing advice to people? My closing advice to people was just going to be, you know, as with any part of your life, uh, the, what you do with your hobby is a way to feel good about yourself and make other people feel good about themselves. So, you know, use it as a force for good is, is always my, my best advice to people. Yeah, 100%. Armando, did you have any last word? Uh, well, I guess if you feel tired about painting, just take a break. Like, I've taken many breaks. <laughs> and everything yeah. in life. Yeah, just take a break. It, you'll, once you come back to the painting table, you'll find your mind refreshed and it help a lot. Like personal experience. I feel like ever since the, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I feel like since the pandemic, we've all been working ourselves into the ground. So just taking an evening off sometimes is a, from whatever we're working on, it can be very refreshing for everything. So again, thank you to everybody. Thank you for watching today. Check the comment section down below for links and information about entering the painting contest and joining our various Discord servers. And until our next painting contest, please stay safe, have fun, love each other, and we will see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. Bye, everybody.